Okay, this is an update to the Face SVG plugin. Um, I'm putting this up on GitHub, and uh, if you've seen the earlier video, um, it basically lets you go ahead and select a face and just say SVG layout profile, and then it just makes a copy of that um, into the XY plane. This has changed so that it's actually copying these as faces, not just copying the edges. Uh, that has some advantages I'll show you about in a little bit. Um, another thing this adds is support for pocket faces. So if we look here, um, I've basically created these things to be a little bit more elaborate. So if you select the surface face here, and I say SVG layout SVG profile, you see that it's actually generating it as uh, step faces. And it does face detection and does some analysis of the object so it can figure out like this face is a related object. So I go ahead and say face SVG layout. And it detected that this was part of the same surface and that this pocket cut, you know, I guess a data cut is related. Um, we can just, uh, it's created a layer for those. So we can go ahead and switch to that layer and turn off the other geometry and look at that top down. And you see what it looks like. Um, and then if I go ahead and click on this, and write it to an SVG profile file, um, which is out over here. Uh, I'm putting it into this SVG directory and saves it. And then we can just look at that using any web browser. And you can see that uh, as I zoom out, the other zoom out. Um, and so this is the SVG generated. This is just Chrome looking at it, the Chrome browser. You can look at it in Inkscape or you know whatever SVG tool, but Chrome accurately renders SVG 1.1, so this shows that it actually is correctly being rendered. And one of the things is the pocket cuts uh, are highlighted in different shades of gray, so that something that the, the shape of origin isn't paying any attention to that, but at least it gives you a visual indication. Um, these are separate uh, SVG elements, and so the shape origin can be set to cut each one separately. Um, there's also annotation in the SVG file itself that has the actual cut depth for these different profiles um, and for this slot here. Um, that's something that the uh, Fusion 360 plugin does as well, but I'm told that the tool itself is not yet honoring those for anything, but possibly in the future it will. Um, if I zoom in, just just to verify once again that this is uh, actually ac dimensionally accurate uh, files. If I look at the uh, source code, you'll see that the uh, this the model dimensions uh, are brought into the actual SVG. All of these dimensions here, the paths and things, are dimensionally accurate. So uh, it may be that uh, that'll help. Uh, to actually get the thing cut. And uh, so let's go back here. Um, so like I said, these are going on to a separate profile, uh, a separate layer. And then I just took another example, um, basically pretty much the same thing. This is actually a component. So I created a component um, there had been a bug that uh, the geometry that was getting generated uh, was actually getting generated within a component itself, which messed things up a bit. Um, I fixed that. So we say layout, and it closes the component before making the copy. And then you can say SVG write profile. And again, this is over here. So we say save. And come back to the web browser and bring in a fresh, now we have this component experiment. And again, um, it is writing the uh, SVG output uh, correctly, the pocket cuts, um, the different depth cuts are in a different shade of gray. And uh, that's pretty much all that is. And then this is this original test case that I had, which generates a bunch of things. So I'll just go ahead and say select all and lay out them all to an SVG profile and then turn off that layer so you can see it a little better. And um, one of the things that this 
this ver version is doing as well is this group that gets created inside of Facebook, uh, inside of SketchUp, is actually what gets used to generate the uh, the actual SVG. The the previous version, there was a bunch of metadata that was being generated at the time you did the copy, and if you m messed around with this, it wouldn't be honored. So if you move things around, it wouldn't be honored. So this version, you can actually go ahead and edit these, and you can like move these around. Now you shouldn't be like changing the geometry a whole lot um, because obviously uh, if you're doing that and your model is um, not reflecting that then it won't be accurate but for something like changing the layout and I'm obviously not very good at SketchUp here so I just wanted to sort of make this layout more like what I want for you know whatever reason um, you know you want the things organized in some way um, so you can actually mess around with these move them around I mean you could make small changes if you knew that there was something in the model that didn't accurately reflect what you wanted to do in the SVG um, so I've just sort of done a little bit of reorganization close that and say SVG write SVG profile and again this is over here I say save and come over here and refresh and so now we have these test faces and again zoom out of here and uh, I don't know if you were paying attention but the the, the place where I move these around to is uh, is the actual place that they were generated in the SVG um, and uh, that's it so this uh, iteration will be up uh, on github and uh, I'll post a comment uh, it describes a little better how to find it uh, on the uh, Shaper Origin website as well. Thanks. For